Hi, my name is Katie Fletcher, and this is my presentation over the semester-long uh, practice that we did. So my client is Megan. She's white. At the beginning of the session, she was 20, and now she's 21. She had a birthday. Uh, she's single. She lives with roommates, is a college student, and plays volleyball. Uh, she was referred to us by her friend. So at the intake stage, her presenting problem was stress and anxiety with school. The tool that we used was the informed consent tool, which she then signed and is in with her paperwork. Uh, the skills I used were information giving with the consent form, uh, closed-ended questions like, uh, you know, who is your parents? Uh, and then I used some open-ended questions like, who do you define as your family? Uh, and validated her feelings about stress with school. And that was just me going over the three limitations with her and making sure that she understood what that meant. In the assessment phase, we used the multidimensional assessment form, which went over a lot of different areas that I may not myself have implemented into my treatment with her. Uh, we talked about religion, which she wasn't uh, religious. Substance use and abuse, which there was no preventing problems with that. Family structures, uh, where she lived, where she worked. And then the skills I used were reflection of feelings, clarification, and open-ended questions. I used these just to have a better feel for the client on what she wanted to get out of these sessions because that's the main uh, focus was just so she could have what she needed to. Here's another video. And that was just me reflecting on the fact that she was uh, presenting symptoms of anxiety in the way she feels about her schoolwork. I'm sorry that that's really hard to hear. So the DSM-5, I if I had to diagnose her, I would diagnose her with generalized anxiety disorder, which is just uh, excessive worry and anxiety about everything, pretty much. Has to occur for at least six months, as it says. My evidence-based practice was derived from two different articles. I have three slides for it. I'm not going to read these quotes to you, but uh, the main article, which is the first two, was about psychoeducation and how it's very important to implement that when you're trying to ease somebody's mind when it comes to stress, anxiety. It fills them up to know more about what they're actually dealing with. And this is the other one. It's, uh, it has a lot of research to back it up. This article had done its own research before they implemented it into their experiment. And then this one's about narrative therapy. Um, it's just, with this I had changed it a little bit, but they found it to be very helpful with the population that they had worked with to change their story into what they want. With my client, I had her write down what stressed her out and then what she did to relieve that stress. So it wasn't necessarily changing the story, but it was changing the way you could see that stress uh, by replacing it with a po uh, positive coping mechanism. And the intervention, we use the individualized treatment plan. Uh, I use summarization, clarification, and information giving. And here's another video.
And then I was asking a question after that. It was an open-ended question asking if uh, other sports uh, gave her the same fulfillment that volleyball does also, and she had replied yes. For the termination stage, I used the Likert scale to evaluate uh, the effectiveness of these interventions that we uh, went over through the sessions. So the skills I used were open-ended questions. Uh, how did this affect your life? Uh, summarization, summarizing what all we went over through the 12 weeks and clarification just to uh, figure out a few things that I was still a little unclear on. And here's another video. And then five things I did well. I mirrored the client very well in my videos. Uh, I was, I would say I was decent at summarizing what the sessions were over. Uh, giving the client time to talk is something I was really trying to do, just putting it back on them. Uh, letting the client direct, the, direct <coughs> these sessions. What we talked about was really what she presented to me at the time. And then using an open and closed ended questions, I was really good at that. Five things I can improve on. Facial expressions by far. I forget to smile sometimes. Implementing other tools for goal, goal making. Uh, trying to broaden my horizons and not sticking to just narrative and bibliotherapy. Uh, making better SMART goals, because I am not very good at that. Speaking more clearly and directly. And utilizing reflections of feelings, because I'm not well equipped to handle, or to use that in my practice as of yet. Are there any questions? Um, which which goal, I guess, did you say were, would you say worked best for her? The goal that worked best for her, well, there was two that were really like, that she seemed to enjoy. There was one about getting to know herself better which she said she had volunteered at a boys and girls club and she was like doing sports with them. She seemed really enthused about it when she was talking. Um, the other goal would be uh, the narrative therapy, writing down the skill or the stressor and then the skill used to uh, take away that stress. I feel like those helped her the most. Yes? What would you say, um, considering that her demographics are age, race, current kind of status in life where she would be at school and everything. How did that contribute to um, the goal setting for you? That really contributed because it, college is a time to get to know yourself, which was one of the main goals because I know from my experience that going into college, not knowing who you are, or having strong ties to your family support systems uh, can really have a negative impact on that and cause a lot more unneeded stress. Mm -hmm. So that was really, uh, an underlying thing I could pick up from that. Anything else?